Just a little while ago, I distilled mercury, and it was brought to my attention that I didn't store it in the best way. I stored the mercury under water to reduce the amount of vapor that came off, but this does lead to some problems. First of all, the bottle is a closed system, so even if the mercury is evaporating at a slower rate, the bottle will eventually fill up with vapor. It seems that keeping water over mercury is more useful if you're working with an open container. For long-term storage, it seems like the vapors build up anyway, and all you really need is a nice tightly capped bottle. The second major problem is that even though I distilled the mercury, it's not super pure. A lot of commercial mercury is distilled three times, and the super pure stuff is distilled many more. So although my mercury appears shiny, it still might contain some contaminants. In the presence of these contaminants, the water on top will slowly get murky and dirty over time. Just as an example, here's the mercury before I distilled it. The water in the bottle on the left is relatively clear because the mercury was only stored for something like four months. The bottle on the right was stored for about a year and a half, and you can see the water is pretty dirty. Anyway, for these two reasons, and the added fact that mercury looks much cooler without water on top, I decided to get rid of the water. Also, this bottle wasn't exactly the most secure, and even though it was shatterproof, it still wasn't ideal. To get rid of the water, the fastest way is to just add it to a separatory funnel. I was honestly a little bit scared during this step because I was adding about 9 pounds of mercury and I wasn't sure if my separatory funnel could hold this. It was probably more than strong enough to hold everything, but just the idea that it could break made me kind of nervous. After sitting in the separatory funnel for 30 seconds, almost all of the water should have separated, so I start to drain the mercury. To prevent mercury from splashing, I had to lift the beaker a little, and unfortunately this obstructs your view a bit. So just for you guys, I stopped draining the mercury, and I repositioned the sep funnel. This is probably the way that I should have started things off, but anyway, now that it's deeper in the beaker, the splashing is much less. Once I'm done draining away the mercury, the separatory funnel is taken away, and the water is transferred to a mercury waste container. The water contains trace amounts of mercury, so it's really important to not pour it down the drain. At this point, almost all of the water should be gone, but just to dry things further, I'm going to use a paper towel. This is definitely not the official way to dry mercury, and it's just something I thought would be easy to do. The mercury and the paper towel will more or less repel each other, but water should be absorbed. Although this should pick up the majority of water, there's almost definitely water still left over. To really get the mercury dry, we would either have to heat it under vacuum at an elevated temperature, or to carry out another distillation. I really didn't want to do either of these things, so I accepted the fact that my mercury would be a little bit wet. It's hard to see, but the paper towel left some fibers in the mercury. Anyway, the next thing that we do is a filtration through some cotton. The major purpose of this is to get rid of any solid contamination that might have formed during storage, as well as the paper towel fibers. An added benefit is that cotton absorbs water, so the mercury will be dried a little bit more. The procedure here is pretty simple, and I did the exact same thing in my previous mercury cleaning video. The mercury is added on top of the cotton, and then using the plunger, I force it through. In the bottle below, I collect nice and shiny mercury, and now I just have to keep repeating the addition until all of the mercury is filtered. The syringe is filled with the last bit of mercury, and then everything is squeezed through. I pushed the plunger to the very bottom, and held it there for several seconds to try to force out as much mercury as possible. When I felt I got out as much mercury as I could, the syringe was taken away. The cotton in the syringe is full of mercury, and it definitely can't be thrown out. The syringe and the cotton have to be thoroughly and properly cleaned before tossing them, 
or it can be given to a proper mercury waste service. Anyway, now that I'm done filtering the mercury, I go ahead and securely cap the bottle. I now have a bottle of relatively water-free mercury, but it's dangerous to store mercury in glass. If anything potentially dangerous is stored in a glass bottle, there should be some sort of secondary containment. In my case, I got an acrylic container from Walmart. Before I put the mercury bottle in, I dump in some sulfur. The reaction between mercury and sulfur is extremely slow at room temperature, but it's still useful to add. For short term storage it would make no sense, but for long term storage, if any mercury vapor were to escape the bottle, it would have enough time to react with the sulfur. Just so I didn't dirty the bottle up with sulfur, I made a small plastic bag sleeve. The bottle of mercury was placed into the container, it was snapped shut, and I'm pretty much done at this point. It's really recommended to use a plastic or steel container instead of glass, because glass can obviously shatter. However, I found that the mercury looked much nicer in this glass bottle, so I sacrificed safety for beauty. At some point in the future though, I'll probably invest in a nice clear plastic bottle. It's also recommended to pack the outer container with something like kitty litter, to prevent the inside bottle from moving, and to protect it from impact. However, again, for purely aesthetic reasons, I wanted to be able to see the mercury, so I obviously didn't do that. In the end though, I think this is mostly fine, as long as I don't throw it across the room or knock it off the table. I just have to be really careful when I take the bottle out and go to pour the mercury, because if I were to drop it and it shattered, it would be pretty catastrophic. Anyway, I guess I'll see how this water-free mercury holds up with long-term storage.